Hi, I'm from the Federal Reserve uh, Bank of Chicago, from the Federal Reserve System. People used to like us. I hope some of them still do and that that will grow over time. Uh, your allusion to the economy was quite appropriate. Uh, I, I direct the regional section of the research area, so I'm very conversant with Chicago, uh, a little bit less conversant with tall buildings, and I'm happy to learn from all of you. But I am very familiar with, uh, I think, the role of, of density, which is what tall is all about and what you're able to do with tall in a very important way. So today I'm going to talk about uh, tallness, density, and uh, Chicago in a somewhat specific context. Uh, and that's the context of Chicago as it aspires to be a global city. Now we've had a little bit of a setback recently with our Olympic bid on that. But uh, in introducing you to Chicago, for those of you who aren't here, I think there's a, a concept that's been bought into by Chicago, even though globalization as a topic has become a little bit passe, and it's, uh, it's certainly taken a few knocks lately with the economy and financial industries and so forth. Uh, but I think that's how Chicago will come to understand the importance of tall and what it aspires to be. So I'll talk about proximity, density, circulation, and tall and how tall really makes uh, wealth creation in the United States and in our great cities uh, possible. So no better place to do that than Chicago. I pulled a couple quotes, uh, one from Donald Miller, who's chronicled the city's development in its heyday of the 19th century, uh, where, and, where and when so many of the innovations in tallness uh, were created by the exigency of of the value and of land around the port of Chicago. And he said it's become commonplace to argue that the skyscrapers of Chicago were built because rising land values and rents in the constricted loop forced investors to build upward. He said, but the opposite soon became true, that skyscrapers raised urban values in a process by which the effect became the cause. And what he means by that is that people thrown together in proximity. They needed to be proximate because of the nexus of the two great waterway systems, the Mississippi Valley system and the Great Lakes system, made land very valuable around the port, about the nexus, around the hub where you needed to stage and process materials, easily load it, where the markets were made in grain, lumber, and livestock, and so forth. Uh, this drove the skyscraper, but then something in turn happens. When people come together, and they can do this very efficiently and interact, new ideas are created, and that propelled Chicago further. The grain elevator, the railroads, the innovations would lead to even further growth is what density gives you, interaction, information, idea creation. And that's what all cities are about in density and tall buildings. And we go forward now, a lot of that's by a bygone era. Manufacturing has become a commodity. It's a small part of the economy. Same with agriculture. Uh, these are still important cities. Chicago is a great intermodal hub, if you will, uh, with third in the world in the number of lifts, intermodal lifts, because it's the nexus of the railroads. But here our great uh, urban economist Edward Glazer has this to say, and that is that industries in denser areas are much more productive than elsewhere. The reason is because cities today have a new function, and that is that they're learning places. They always were idea generation, place, generating places, ideas, places where you could plan what the strategy was, the logistics of transportation, of movement of goods and manufacturing. But now in the information service economy, that's all the more important. So now they're creating wealth through a density of complete service uh, activity, if you will. He points out studies by, by economists that show that people, workers, when they come to great cities, start to learn. Their productivity rises the longer they've been in cities. And we know it's because they are in cities, in your tall buildings, interacting. Because when they leave, they take the productivity with them. We can observe it. It's been acquired in the city in the process of the density and tallness and the configurations which, which cities provide and, and create. Now, a certain part of this, I think, has been propelled by what we've called globalization. Uh, what Chicago has become has been a, a dense place for work, play, and residential, which means tall building and proximity. The Chicago economy and other global cities require this personal interaction and exchange. 
Now, it's not enough simply alone to have such a configuration. We also need efficient circulation amongst those buildings within the metropolitan area. We need great international travel connections and world-class amenities as well. So it's part of that configuration, and I note that in 1976 you started to talk about tall buildings in the urban habitat because it's essential that you participate in creating a working city with circulation, transportation, world-class amenities, and so forth, so that the tall buildings ultimately have value. Globalization has slain the tyranny of distance, lower transportation and communications costs, lower trade barriers, we sometimes think of that. That's just increased the complexity of transactions in the economy of trade, what needs to be organized, what needs to be planned, and what requires human interaction. In the previous age, cities were these production transit centers, but now they're information, administrative, and creative centers. The office meeting hasn't died, it's become more important. The chance meetings of people at conferences such as these are more important than ever. The human interaction part of it is what density provides. Uh, of educated people, the returns to education because the information nature of the economy has become more intense, if you will, has raised the returns of education. It's widened the income distribution. But it's also made a few cities the necessary place where effective globalization has to take place, where human interaction has to be that much more intense, where density has to be higher, where buildings, tall buildings, have, of various types and uses have to be co-located and interact very well. One of my favorite studies, and I can't uh, take too long on this, but it goes back quite a ways before we started talking about globalization. Over time in metropolitan areas by size, if we looked at the ratio of management to production workers across the size distribution of cities, it was pretty compact back in 1950. But the changing nature of the economy made it so that now our largest cities, many of which are global cities, quote unquote, have much, much higher ratios of educated, creative people in them versus the production workers, versus the smaller cities which really have become with the backwater in terms of where the production, more mundane, routinized activities take place. So Chicago, it's become, I think, from what the hog butcher of the world, which it once was, the movement of freight, uh, the disassembly of livestock, the manufacturer and stacker of wheat, to a knowledge mecca. Uh, all these things that uh, you might learn if I had more time, that we're one of the three top convention business meeting places in North America, a tourism center, uh, professional business services, uh, world's great universities, headquarters, and so forth, give rise to what economists call agglomeration economies, just meaning that the, su the sum is more than the parts. The whole is more than the sum of the parts because of co-location, density, and tall buildings being part of that. Uh, Chicago's transformation I've documented in my writings. The red line uh, is the, the, uh, the height on the, the vertical axis is the share of Chicago's employment and manufacturing versus the U.S. and the Great Lakes. Chicago's great achievement is that it was once the manufacturing capital and it's made a successful transformation to something other, to an information, creative, professional service economy. While the rest of the Great Lakes has remained that auto manufacturing intensive kind of place. If we took an index of concentration, we'd see that professional and business services, financial services, those most information intensive industries are now highly concentrated in Chicago. It's the capital of North America with movement towards a national city and a global city in terms of its knowledge and information transactions. The great heyday of Chicago was in the 1990s when we created more jobs and business and professional services than any other metropolitan area in North America. Those are kind of the signature industries, if you will, of the new global economy. Those with the creativity, with the knowledge transmission that run and organize the world's commerce. Can't do this without other elements. Uh, global reach between places is just as important because people interact not only within the dense configuration but with people uh, in their counterparts in other places of the world. And I don't need to explain that to you. Uh, your conference is all about that with the wonderful scope of places throughout the world from which you've come to meet 
rather than meet on the internet, uh, but rather face to face, so that a different kind of communication can take place, a kind of casual, uh, serendipitous type of information and creativity where you network and exchange information and what's called ambiguous information. Uh, it, it, we don't understand it yet, uh, but uh, we know that still human interaction is different. We can more efficiently transmit commoditized, digitized information over the PC and the internet and the cell phone with people that you know you're punching your buttons in the audience right now to do such. But that allows you to escape the office and transmit and share information of a more ambiguous creative type. And in the information economy, somewhat ironically, both are more important and hence the continued need and rise of cities and tallness throughout the world. But people do need to, uh, to travel to do that, so the other essential element for Chicago has been the rise of O'Hare and Midway Airport, where there are some startling statistics that we're the ninth most popular destination for overseas visitors, and uh, we receive 42 million business, business and leisure travelers. Uh, the circulation on the ground is just as important. Uh, some statistics here that you can look at at your leisure. Uh, we draw on 4.6 million potential employees through this configuration of the railroads that converge here in Chicago's loop. Uh, 600,000 people come to work over our transportation system. Traffic's bad in Chicago, but you know, it's bad in New York and Houston and other places of its size as well. Uh, we're still quite effective in terms of our mass transit and bringing these people together in one of the world's great configurations. Uh, tall is not only about downtown, uh, my friend Dan McMillan has documented the many sub-centers in our great metropolitan areas. Uh, this one in Chicago where we used to have 15 employment sub-centers and uh, by year 2000 we had 32. Uh, those allow an interaction between the sub-centers, trade and interaction, and also people that want to live in a less dense residential configuration can converge instead on office parks and employment subsetters uh, rather than on the downtown core. And on the whole, it adds to the productivity of the whole metropolitan area. Chicago is said to have uh, room to grow, uh, so World Business Chicago tells us here. Uh, office space, so we're one of uh, two metropolitan areas with Chicago that has more of our office space in the city than in the suburbs. And uh, land is still possible here to grow outward, unlike uh, the island of New York. Uh, within this loop, we have nine Fortune 500 companies that are within walking distance of each other. In addition to the 600,000 uh, people who flow downtown, 55% of whom arrive by uh, mass transit. Uh, our ranking as a global city has been studied uh, by taking the signature industries, uh, the management consulting firms, the top law firms, and advertising uh, where their major offices are and how they interconnect throughout the world. Uh, Peter J. Taylor has done this study and has found that Chicago, in fact, is connected throughout the world and ranks seventh amongst the interaction of what are the global leaders in professional services, law, and headquarters. You'll recognize some of those from uh, the World Business Chicago slides, uh, the Business Services Center. Uh, you know, global economy is complex, and the sum being greater than the sum of the parts means that there's interaction co in this co-location. So our great headquarters, of course, can acquire, purchase the services they need in accounting and law and so forth in approximate fashion. I've been cut off, no bell. <laughs> I got the Nobel Prize for a minute, but it slipped away. Uh, but again, the sum being greater than the parts, the co-location between these professional services and headquarters that we have here is important. Uh, the international business leaders, we have 10 Fortune Global 500 companies as well. Uh, that's a place where learning can take place amongst people who work at these different headquarters. They can attend meetings such as this because they take place in Chicago. They can find customers, new ideas can be uh, created. So this, this co-location again you can see in many, many different ways allows uh, productivity in urban areas to be higher. Uh, the flight connections as well, even unrelated sectors that are globally important in nature add to the demand for air travel and then increase the frequency and reach of global air travel from O'Hare, which again 
benefits and redounds to all the activities in the area. International business community has found this to be the case. Uh, the location in the middle of a country is important, but that hub airport uh, where 50% of the flights of the travelers are actually through passengers, but that adds the frequency, scope, and density that's needed for the firms that are here to reach their customers and to bring customers in, many of whom are around the world, and it has incited uh, quite significant foreign direct investment here. We have 30 chambers of commerce internationally, 100 different global trade organizations, and I'll let you read the factoids on here, uh, but uh, it adds to our global community. You'll again recognize some of the marquee names of foreign companies that have their North American headquarters here in Chicago. And education again with top 10 universities, uh, top universities that have become, as you know, global institutions as well. Again, adds to the sum greater than the parts, both for work recruiting labor, uh, but also uh, in terms of educating the executives and all the way down to lower level workers here at very fine universities. So the core of density, another element is where workers uh, work, if you will. Uh, the percentage graduates uh, by age, it's become a very young city, the central city of Chicago for the college educated. Uh, for those that live here, 39% of those people aged 25 to 34 have college degrees or higher. And it's greater than the suburbs, which you wouldn't have found 10 or 20 years ago in Chicago. Uh, they come here from the suburbs of Chicago to work at our, our uh, work agglomeration, our, our workforce city. Uh, they come here from around the Midwest uh, to what uh, Dave's called the mountains on the plains here of Chicago. Uh, this is a map of the percent college educated for just the city going back to 1960. You can see how it's grown, how the city is becoming more like some of the European cities that you know. It's the center of commerce, culture, uh, recreation, and life of the metropolitan area. Uh, the vibrant downtown has 310,000 people who live in the neighborhoods around, in and around the CBD, and the concentration of college education and advanced degrees is even higher here around the central area. It's a college campus in and of itself. There are dormitories that are shared by the various universities right in Chicago's loop. 65,000 students attend everyday college and university in downtown Chicago, which adds to its vibrancy. As a place of work, you're not, you might not be surprised to find that the most education-intensive jobs are in the city rather than the suburbs. And if we look at the educational intensity across uh, master's professional degrees, uh, there's a majority of the work site, the jobs that are highly educated, taking place in the city. For that reason, businesses have been moving to the central area of Chicago. I just highlight some of them. They want access to the workforce of course, because the young people choose to, uh, to live in the city. But more than that, it's where the ideas and information flows in the many, many fashions in which I've already mentioned them to you, where the business meetings, the university lectures, where the casual business meetings take place is where you can stay abreast of the trends in consumer products as well as technology of uh, intermediate products as well. Uh, we're a world city, other large cities, of course, this is important, but uh, immigrants find it hospitable to be in cities. It's easier to learn about the place, to learn to get around, to get situated, to contact with the business community and so forth. And we have 30 different ethnic groups with a population greater than 25,000 in Chicago. Uh, and the, the mayor has been uh, very, very aggressive in making this a hospitable, easy to settle kind of place for immigrants of, uh, of all different stripes. Uh, the density, uh, the intensity of population allows you to have specialized world amenities. Uh, you can look them up in your hotel guide. I put some on the on the screen here for you, but the, those tall buildings, of course, allow the creation of very specialized, high-quality restaurants, hotels, uh, world-class culture, such as the Lyric Opera, the Symphony, uh, the theater companies, and so forth. Finally, although tall buildings are important, I found this one photo and chose, it being, and chose to put the tall buildings in the background. Tall buildings aren't everything. I hope you enjoy your stay here in Chicago. It's a great recreation city, especially when the fall color is at its peak. And I hope you get out and see our city a bit. Uh, just to reiterate, 
the sky skyscraper is uh, this word which I looked up, uh, uh, that which with which no other exists, the sine qua non, and I found there's more different pronunciations of this than you'll ever find. So, <laughs> But uh, tallness really allows density, it allows proximity, uh, it allows circulation. Everything on the ground, though, that you do as a great metropolitan area and public policy affects that circulation because it allows information exchange, learning, and creativity. That's what cities are about today. And it's an information age despite some setbacks. It's a global age despite some setbacks. And Chicago, I think, has come to understand this. And uh, certainly your organization being here is a great contributor to that. So thank you very much. Thank you.